firewood. It's not the most fun thing in the world, but Clint from CNC Equipment is on his way. He's bringing something down to make it a little bit more fun, and I'm kind of excited to try it out. I got to get a few things ready first. He said this rig takes 10 foot logs, so we got to get a few of them cut up, but I want to touch up the chain a little bit. I do hand file. I keep organ files, and I've got a bench top Chicago Electric I use too, and then I, I love this too. They just, they do work really well. It just kind of depends the mood I'm in, and I had one of these, but the actual chuck stripped that I couldn't get the bits out anymore so I had to pick up a new one now we don't use firewood like Neil Cove dig drive DIY he's done some firewood processing videos and a whole bunch of really good firewood videos or like Adam from hometown acres we don't heat our home with it or anything like that we typically use it for cooking down maple syrup or on our campouts but the biggest thing the most beneficial thing for firewood for us is we use it to trade with quite a bit Basically, Clint said all these need to be about 10 foot. So we're gonna rearrange the wood pile. One, to get them cut down to 10 foot, and two, move them a little closer to where we actually do the wood. And we're gonna use the 755, because anytime I start that, it costs me money. And that costs me money too, but not quite as much. And we all see your tail in the shot. We do. We really do. It's there. And then we'll put them over here, which is closer to the firewood pile anyway. So it just kind of makes a little bit more sense. grab that long skinny one underneath for another runner so we're just gonna move those up up top
I don't mind the rain, but uh, I don't do lightning, you know? I don't think anybody should, personally. I feel like it's a little out of our qualification area. Yeah. All right. All right, so Clint just got here, and Jay and Kevin. Just gotta start taking that stinger off side. We're ready, man. <laughs> Action! All right. <laughs> All right. Who are you and what is this thing? Jay from CNC Equipment, and this is the Halverson 120 uh, wood processor, the adjustable model. Um, we've been selling these products since, what, 2014 or so. Um, we're going to let you demo this one out. Pretty excited about it. It is a cool unit for sure. How many sizes you got of this thing? So there's three different main models of the Halverson. You got the one. 20 which is this model cuts up to that 16 inch range got the 140 which is a little bit bigger cuts up to uh, 17 inch or so but it's a little heavier uh, bigger gauge steel uh, it's got a bigger saw motor on it bigger cylinder for faster cycle time a better grapple arm um, and then from that they got the 150 which is even a bigger version of the 140 with the higher end components on it um, it gets up 22 inch stuff. How heavy is this? Just Weight to... wise, it's a little less than 1500 pounds. It's not too bad. All right, so Jay and Clint, look, there's some behind the scenes for Clint getting the camera ready. They got this thing, and Kevin, where did Kevin go? He had to go. He's going back here to visit Mother Nature. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kevin's gone for a little bit. They got this thing all hooked up, and they're doing a video on their channel on how they got it hooked up, because it's universal for every machine, and every machine's a little bit different. But they got it all hooked up, Clint ran log through, and we're gonna see. What I can't do, there's gonna be a learning curve, so. It'll take you a little while to get used to. It'll take a little bit. Now what? <laughs> oh, pressure. So you're gonna put your, uh, you're gonna slide your bed, yeah, slide your bed forward. There you go, keep on going. All the way forward, all right. Now you probably wanna lift your arm up, and you know, slide your bed back. Whoa, how long you want your wood? About right there. Now put your grab arm down. You're gonna slide your bed all the way back. Now give it a little bit of throttle so your saw will run. And just pull that trigger. Now you're gonna lift your grab arm up. Do you lift the grab up when you split? Yeah, you gotta lift the grab arm up. There you go, now split. Stop. You gotta set your length on your wood, so go back out again. About right there. Put your grab arm down and slide her back. And go again. There you go. Clint's taken off. Clint, Jerry, and Kevin are taking off. They got this thing set up. We ran through it a few times. I kind of got the basics of it. Now he sells, they sell three different models of this and this is the smaller version. It's kind of the more 
homestead friendly version that's why they're letting me use it for a little bit they did leave two they got a four-way wedge on it there's a six way on there now and then you left an extra chain it's four or four chains 78 links and then instruction manual as well but let's uh let's play with this a little bit I just got done working on the backhoe in case you missed it, but I brought these two logs up and I'm kind of getting the hang of it. And I want to time myself and see how long it takes to cut and split these two logs. One thing I feel like I didn't explain very well when I said they got this thing hooked up, this was what I was primarily talking about. This is completely customizable to any machine. They send this part of the connection on this part of the connection and they're separate. And what you do is you go through on the pins Clint basically took a multimeter while Jay hit buttons on there, the buttons that I wanted to use on the joystick, and he'd held that. Clint would go around and find that pin, they'd label it, and once we figured out what controls we wanted on that joystick, they just plug and played the wires in. You put that up there, it's a one-time setup, you're good to go from then on out. And like I said, customizable for any machine. And if you don't have this, if you're gonna run it on the front of a tractor, and you don't have this option or that many functions, they do sell a joystick that runs out of that, and it's basically just a handheld joystick. You hold it in your hand, and it's got all the functions you need on it. So there are options for that too, but I wanted to explain that, because I think that's pretty daggone cool. And getting that hooked up, how that whole process worked, that's the video that Clint, Jay, and Kevin came down to make. So at some point on their channel, that'll come out. So when somebody buys this from them, and they call them up, and they're like, hey, I'm having some issues, I'm having a hard time figuring out what wire goes where, so they're like, hey, go to this video, it shows you how to do that process it helps them and it helps the customer so it's pretty cool if you want to see that video you got to go over and get subscribed i don't know when it's coming out but if you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on to cnc equipment then you definitely won't miss it all right what is 304 right now i got two logs and i'm probably going to move the camera around too So a touch over 10 minutes to do that, which isn't too bad. You saw a couple of them got stuck. You can also hear that I'm idling way low and I have the pressure relief valve set kind of low too. Since I'm in the learning process, I don't want to tear anything up. But I think once I run a few logs through, which I'm feeling pretty comfortable at this point, I can bump that pressure relief up just a little bit and I can bump my speed up on the machine up a little bit too. Down here at the lake by the bell tower, I've got a couple logs sitting down here. 
is we want to get some firewood down here for fires this summer and fall. I mean, why wouldn't it fell them? I gotta cut these to length, probably just in half, and then we'll run them through. That road on there the whole way down. All right, the subscribers sent me like six tape measures because I'm always losing them. Definitely getting a little bit more comfortable with it. That was idled all the way up. Let's run the next three just like that. As I get more comfortable with it, we'll just kind of keep getting it to where it's supposed to be. I'm taking it easy. It's not mine. I don't want to break it, okay? That didn't take any time at all and no effort, just a little thumb use. I don't know what to say about it. It pretty much speaks for itself. There's one last thing I want to do. Everything we've been cutting and splitting has been down on the ground. I've got this dead ash tree right here. It needs to come down and I want to split it. So we're going to time how long it takes to get this down, get it cut up, get it split. And I want to show off what I think is a really cool capability and benefit of this processor. I did want to mention this processor this size, they said right now is about 10.5. And compared to other processors, or wood processors that are similar in that range, that's a pretty daggone good price. Of course, you gotta have the machine to run it, but we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. Let's see if we can get this thing on the ground. It's 2.42 right now. How you doing, Scott? Scott's having a good day, I bet. Let's see what we've got. Like we said, it's pretty dead. She's got a little lean that way, most of it's that way. Most of the top is on that side. But I'd like to try to drop it down the trail so it's easier for me to get. So we'll try to just a little bit. Nothing too fancy. the high stump so it'll help me dig that stump out whenever we get to that but that's where I want it I can work right here from the trail is at the base.
I think that is huge for this compared to like a bigger trailered wood processor where you always have to take the wood to the processor you take the processor to the tree if you want to straight to back of a side-by-side -side or a dump trailer or a pickup truck and now I can take this exactly where I need it whether it be the house down by the pond to a rental property or over to the barn to store it literally cut the tree down scoop the log up didn't even have to touch any of that other than a little bit of thumb work and it's going right where I need it I think that's pretty awesome I did have to pick up a couple that fell off the back but that's more of my operating and the vehicle choice also only one side of this tailgate works so fingers crossed she all stays in on the way there straight from the back of the side-by-side -side, right onto the wood pile. You guys tell me, what's the technical count, the number of touches for this firewood? Because I feel like it's pretty low in the grand scheme of things. I'm gonna try coming in from this angle this time. I think that might work a little bit better. When I did it this way, I wanted to spill over the edge. This way, hopefully, the sides catch it. We'll try it. I had way less spillage that time, like two or three just fell off that side. Coming in from that side worked a heck of a lot better for me. See if we can get this one out of here. I don't want to put a crazy amount of pressure on that. And the harvester itself is plenty strong. I'm more worried about the tilt cylinders. I don't want to put a lot of excess pressure. But I bet we can very gently wiggle this out of where it's at. show you the diameter what we got. We're learning what the max capacity is, which is good. That's good to know. So it still splits fine. It's just, obviously, the saw can't cut it. Well, we're right at that 16-inch limit. That's the maximum you're going to get out of it, 16 inches which I believe that's what they say it's rated for, so that makes sense. I mentioned it earlier, but this is their smaller processor. They've got several sizes up from this, so if you're not sure what size you need, call CNC Equipment, talk to Jay, and he's gonna have all the answers you need, and he'll get you sized out right. Let's go ahead and finish splitting this one out. We'll finish this thing off. So it is 414. I don't think that's too bad for dropping a tree, getting it cut, getting everything split, and then all I gotta do is put that on the pile and it's done. That's gonna be on your smaller end of trees you're cutting. I definitely size up. But for an operation like we have, which is just the homestead and that kind of thing, that's slick and that's perfect. There are some minor things that you could do to make it a little easier. And in an upcoming video on this processor, we're gonna do those things, including a super inexpensive, like $60 reverse camera with a monitor that we're going to put on a cab we're going to put the whole thing on a magnet and put it up on top of the machine that's one thing the visibility is a little goofy it's not terrible but you do have to kind of lean forward to use it 
a simple fix like this up on the cab you can see the whole operation comfortably some kind of mechanism so i can judge the length of the log a little bit better whenever i'm splitting overall i think it's a pretty slick unit and i went from thinking well that's going to be cool to use to man i really want one and i know what you're thinking mike you don't have the machine to run it if i put a quick attach on that 555 backhoe it's got enough flow and enough horsepower we could probably run it on the front of that. It'd be a little bit more awkward than on a skid steer, but a fella could do it. And if you've got a nice front end loader or a nice ag tractor that's got a front end loader and has enough flow and enough horsepower, you could run that on there too. Remember, they make that harness kit, so if you don't have the functions on the joysticks, they make just a handheld joystick with the functions on it, so you're good to go. You can pretty much put this on anything, as long as it's got the right flow, a quick attach setup, and uh, enough horsepower to do it. And if you want to know if your machine does, Again, you call CNC Equipment and Jay's going to get you hooked up with all the answers you need. More videos coming on this for sure, so stay tuned to the channel. I can't thank Clint enough for letting me borrow this thing because well, he knows what he was doing. He's, he's got me hooked. I don't, we got to, okay, all right. Appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, if you have any questions on this, put them in the comments. I am going to do a YouTube subscriber question and answer on this machine, but I need your questions to do that. All right, that's it. Appreciate you watching. I'll catch you on the next one.